strange things happen when we do division with decimals. And one of the strangest is that sometimes the division just doesn't stop. Let me show you an example, and then we'll see what's happening with this phenomenon. Let's say I wanted to do 3 divided by 11. Right, so I'm taking the fraction 3 elevenths and converting it to a decimal. So that means 11 goes outside, 3 followed by a decimal point goes inside. I'll copy the decimal point up here. Of course, 11 goes into 3 zero times. Now I add a zero. 11 goes into 30 twice with 8 left over. Bring in another 0 and bring it down. 11 goes into 80 7 times with 3 left over. Put in a 0, bring it down. 11 goes into 30 twice. Put in a zero, bring it down. Eleven goes into eighty. By now you're probably getting a sense of deja vu. What's happening here? What's happening is we keep getting the same pattern over and over again. Every time we have a remainder of three, that becomes 11 going into 30, and it gives us a 2. Every time we have a remainder of 8, that becomes 11 going into 80, and it gives us a 7. So that pattern, 3, 8, 3, 8, 3, 8, keeps going through the remainders, which means that the pattern 2, 7, 2, 7, 2, 7 keeps going through the quotient. This is called a repeating decimal. This pattern, 2, 7, 2, 7, 2, 7, will continue forever. To indicate that we have a pattern like this, well, we write one repetition of the pattern with a bar over it. So that 2, 7 with a bar over it says that the pattern 2, 7, 2, 7, 2, 7 will continue forever. OK, what's going on with repeating decimals? The first thing to be aware of is that when we're doing long division, we're always going to either have nothing left or see a remainder repeat. If, of course, we get to the point where there's nothing left, that means our answer is a terminating decimal, so a decimal that does not repeat. If we see a remainder again, then the whole cycle is going to continue, and so our answer is a repeating decimal. We know those are the only two possibilities because the remainder is always smaller than the divisor. That means, among other things, that every fraction can be written as either a terminating or repeating decimal. We don't have the tools available yet to see how we would go about taking a repeating decimal and converting it back to a fraction. But we will develop those tools later. For now, we'll see how to do that on a calculator. All right, so let's, let's take a fraction and convert it to a repeating decimal, first of all. Let's look at the fraction 4 sevenths. Right, OK, looking intently at the calculator, 
I see five seven one four two eight five seven. Ah, okay. So the pattern is going to be the five seven one four two eight. Wow, that's long. Yeah, sevenths give unpleasant decimals. Five seven one four two eight. The whole pattern repeats. How would I convert that back to a fraction using my calculator? It turns out that in order to convert to a fraction using the calculator, if we have a repeating decimal, we have to enter at least 12 digits of the repeating pattern. So 12 digits. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 digits. So I'll have to go through the pattern twice. 5, 7, 1, 4, 2, 8. 5, 7, 1, 4, 2, 8. And now I'm going to say 2 fraction. It gives me my 4 sevenths back. All right, let's say we wanted to take, now I'm going to make up a repeating decimal. 0 0.93 with only the 3 repeating. Notice when I write the line over only the 3, only the 3 repeats. So to enter that into the calculator, I say 0 0.9 and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 copies of the number 3. 2 fraction. 0 0.93 repeating equals 14 fifteenths. In order to confirm that, I could just say 14 divided by 15. There I see 0.93 repeating. Or if I was not trusting my calculator, I could do that long division by hand and see the pattern. So for now, we know how to convert a repeating decimal to a fraction on the calculator. In the future, we'll discover how to do this by hand as well.